Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is your photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. I personally use Squarespace for my online portfolio at jaredpoem.com because it's simple, affordable, and I still don't need to know coding 17 years later. Now is the perfect time to start building your very own website. If you'd like to get a 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up this week, let's start off with an update from the Kodak story last week. Remember when I finished the story and said, someone got freaking rich? Yeah. I was inferring that some potentially shady insider trading shit might have happened, allegedly. As a refresher, the US government bailed out Kodak, a company with a market value of only $100 million, with a $765 million loan. The loan was for Kodak to make USA branded cameras. No, oh, oh right, no, it had nothing to do with cameras at all. The loan was to help turn Kodak into a pharmaceutical company to produce generic drugs. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Last Tuesday, the stock price rose 350% on the announcement, and Wednesday, it had a two-day gain as high as 2,190%. Basically, it went from $2 to $60 in short order. But here's the problem. The stock jumped 26% on Monday, which is the day before the loan was actually announced, which has led Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren to urge the SEC to investigate individuals and corporate entities making large trades of Kodak stock before the announcement, as well as whether anyone inside Kodak shared information about the loan before it was made public. I bet on sure things. On the flip side, the early jump in the stock price might have occurred when a few hometown Rochester papers let the information about the bailout out too soon. Blue Horseshoe loves Anacon Steel. Which does show that someone gave information to the papers before it was made public. Give that a little taste to your friends. On top of that, there were some questionable stock options given to Kodak CEO on the Monday before the announcement to the tune of 1.75 million stock options, which according to the New York Times would have been worth roughly 50 million dollars on paper at the height of the boom. In my opinion, this will end in one of two ways. One, they will find no wrongdoing by anyone inside of Kodak by claiming the leak was done by an outside news source and that stock options being given were a coincidence. I think not. Or two, they will feign ignorance of the law and rules and get away with it. I'd forgotten I was rich. Because why wouldn't they? Ignorance of the law doesn't indemnify you from the laws unless you're somehow associated with the Trump administration. Then you can pretty much do whatever you want and get away with it. Wrong. That's gonna be an issue. You're gonna lose your farm, pal. Ooh, he went there. Anyway, this is still a developing story, so we shall see where it goes. Next up, Olympus, who recently sold, announced a new camera. And guess what? Who cares? Continuing on, could it be? Could it be that Nikon might finally start shipping the long-awaited 70 to 200 2.8S? No. Along with the recently announced Z5 and a bunch of other accessories, according to Nikon rumors, August 28th is now the day that the products start shipping. I check with Madeline K with Nikon PR to see if this is true, and well, she was nowhere to be found because she bought a ton of Kodak stock last Monday. Put your best customers in. She did text me though, and this is what it said. I'm rich, Bjorn. Okay then, Madeline. And good for you. I've had my personal 70 to 200 2.8S on order from Allen's camera for what seems to be a year at this point. Now remember when I traded in all of my F lenses and the D5? Yeah, I've been sitting on a lot of store credit waiting for Nikon to release their Pro Glass. Glass, 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 glass. Now speaking of trading things in, Nikon has announced a trade up to Z program where you can trade in pretty much any old DSLR and get credit plus a $100 bonus towards a new Z camera. Now I say pretty much any, because there's one manufacturer left off the drop-down list. Now, is there any guesses as who it might be? Yep, it's Pentax. Even Nikon doesn't want your shitty DSLRs in trade. Oh, sick burn. Now, what, what's that, Dan? I just lost the only Pentax follower that we had left. One. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. For more information about the Z Trade Up program, head on over to NikonUSA.com slash Z Trade Up. Moving on, Sigma has officially announced their 85 1.4 DG DN lens for Sony E mount cameras. This newly designed lens weighs in at only 630 grams. Now, for 
comparison, the Sigma 50 1.4 non-DN lens weighs in at a whopping 815 grams. So to say that the new 85 1.4 is small and light is truly an understatement, because it is small and light. Unlike the Kodak CEO's bank account, one of the complaints I've had in the past about these new Sigma DN lenses is the aperture ring. Sure, they had a switch for de-clicking, but they never had a switch to lock the aperture ring on A until now. This lock means I no longer have to worry about taking the lens out of the bag and having the aperture ring turn to a place where I didn't want it to go. In our early test, it looks like the Sigma is better, sharper, cleaner, wide open, as well as lighter and even uses stepping motors, similarly to Sony's. Sony's 85 1.0 G Master is coming up on its fifth birthday and just might be outshined by the new Sigma. But I will save my final judgment for the full review, which includes more studio tests and comparisons, as well as real world photos that look like this, 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 wait, wait, none of that. and this. And hopefully, it will be out this weekend. In terms of pricing, the Sigma clocks in at $1,200, which is $600 less than Sony's. And it would make a good addition to my kit alongside my Sigma 35 1.2, 14 to 24, 24 to 70, and 135 1.8. Oh, I can't forget the 105 1.4. That is a beast. And finally, Canon, who's already on a roll, kinda, with their R5 and R6, might be preparing two new APS-C size sensor cameras including one that might, and I repeat, might be considered their flagship. Now, there wasn't a ton of information about it just yet, but it is said to potentially include the same 32 megapixel sensor as the M6 Mark II, two card slots, as well as IBIS. Now, I enjoyed using the M6 Mark II. It's a solid camera, even though it feels like a toy in my hands, and there's not a lot of great options for M lenses just yet. The second rumored camera would be an M50 Mark II, which, if updated correctly, would be a solid option for a vlogging camera. Now, at the end of the day, my issue with these crop sensor cameras is the lack of quality glass. Glass, 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 glass. Sure, you can adapt the EF glass to it without any issues, but if you do that, you negate the size savings altogether. With the prices of full frame bodies getting lower and lower, as well as smaller and lighter, when will these companies choose to kill the so-called flagship APS-C size cameras? Never! And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.